Friends in Christ, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a blessing to see everyone uh, gathered here for worship this morning. Uh, I, I know there are a, a, a slew of announcements that are in our bulletin this morning, and I invite you and encourage you to look at those announcements. But I do have one brief announcement. Just a reminder to folks that uh, next week, at, immediately following our worship service, we're going to have the blessing of the book nook outside. And also, uh, I, I, I believe we're going to have uh, hot dogs and hamburgers, hot dogs and hamburgers. And, uh, and it's, it's not just going to be a church event. It's sort of like a community event because it's open up to the community. So if, if you have uh, friends or neighbors who, uh, who live by you and you want to invite them to church and say, hey, come and have some hot dogs and hamburgers after the church, please feel free to do so. Or if you know somebody that lives right around the area, please do the same and, and, and invite them to church and to celebrate the blessing of the book nook uh, following our worship service. Um, I know that uh, I, I believe oh, Nancy has a, a, a great announcement she would like to make. Morning. Well, it's the last Sunday you can sign up for Trivia Night. And if you haven't already, it, it's such a fun, delicious food, good fellowship evening. And um, you don't have to feel like you're on jeopardy. <laughs> and, uh, don't be intimidated. We have, we have nice questions. And uh, whoever you're sitting with at your table is your team. So it's not like you have to quickly answer these questions. Anyway, uh, we do have a gift option associated with it and the 50-50. And those funds that we collect are, uh, have been decided to go to Ukraine. Uh, through the uh, Lutheran Disaster Relief Funds. Uh, so I think it's a worthy cause. Uh, if you can't make it to a trivia night and you'd still like to give a donation, uh, I have um, a, a container downstairs that you can uh, drop off a donation. Uh, we take checks, uh, Bitcoin, uh, pennies, anything. <laughs> Uh, so, um, if you do write a check, make it out to Welka, and then do the memo for Ukraine on there, and we'd be happy to receive it. Uh, it's a good cause, and it's a lot of fun. So, uh, next Saturday, uh, sign up, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Um, friends in Christ, as we um, are, are prepare our hearts and minds uh, to begin our worship services, we're blessed with a special selection from Peter. I invite you and encourage you to remember in your prayers uh, the families of those who lost their lives in the tragic shooting at the supermarket up in Buffalo, New York yesterday. Um, I believe I heard that was the 190-something uh, mass shooting in the United States. Um, there was another shooting that wasn't really talked about. 17 people at the end of a, a playoff basketball game were also uh, got shot and wounded. So just let's keep everyone in our, our prayers as uh, people who are affected by, the, by gun violence. So uh, Peter, um, can you share a, a word of music to us?
Friends in Christ, I invite you to please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the sea, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flow us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You opened the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the troubled waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and you send us out in lush and barren places. You are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and land. Be honored, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go to them and to not make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is not Psalm 148. I will read you a light print, and I invite the congregation to respond uh, by reading the verses in bold. Hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord. Sing praise all your little Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven and the heavens. And you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever. Giving them a law that shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the world. Young men and ages, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over the earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and has raised all faithful servants, the children of Israel, the people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. Our second reading comes to us from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, the last book in the New Testament, a reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People of God, uh, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm feeling a little depressed this morning. I'm feeling a little bit depressed, not just because my Mets lost a few games last week. You can't, you can't win. You can't. You can't win them all. I'm feeling a little depressed because my favorite, my favorite, 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 favorite TV show got canceled on Friday. Magnum P.I., the reboot, not the one with Tom Selleck, which was a good show for those who remember Tom Selleck and Magnum P.I. I don't want to dump on those, but the, 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 the reboot show that they had on Friday nights was, oh, I, I'm not one who watches a lot of TV, but I can tell you that show that came on on Friday evenings, I was glued to the TV set. It, Magnum P.I., it only had four, it only had a four season run, but I, 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 I was there watching that show because it, you know, it's just one of those shows that just like, it had a, a little suspense. It had some drama. It had a little comedy thrown in here and there. So it was, it was sort of like one of those shows that it would, would just it it it, it just it, it just attracted me. And and it, it, it was also what was interesting was it was also a crime show. I, you know, with with everything that was going on in Magnum, it was, it was sometimes 
that the, that, that the fact that it was also a, a crime show sort of maybe got lost in, in everything that was going on. Crime shows. As I shared, I'm not much of a TV watcher, but there was one crime show also that I was attracted to, a crime show that was called Cold Case. Anybody ever see that show, Cold Case? I, 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 and, and the thing that I, I, I think the thing that attracted me to Cold Case is just the way or, or the, the format of the show. The show, the show would always begin with a crime scene. So, you know, a, a, a body over here, or so, you know, a stabbing victim over here. And then what the, what the show does is it sort of goes, it goes back to the beginning of what led to what you see at the beginning of the show. And, 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 and as the show progresses, you get to see, okay, who may have been the one who committed the crime or who may have been the, the individuals who were part of the, that crime scene that you witnessed right at the beginning of the show. So it's, it, I guess you could say it's one of those shows that sort of does a little, it does a little bit of a backtrack, so to speak, to, to, to sort of fill you in on what happened or what led up to the crime scene. In our first reading this morning, in our first reading this morning, it, 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 it sort of reads a little bit, sort of like, uh, sort of like a, a, a cold case, but not like, like a, a murder or a stabbing. I don't want you to get me get me wrong in, in, in that. But it's it's sort of it, it's sort of a it's sort of a backtrack story, sort of sort of speak. And and, and and let me I guess let me just just go, just uh, go back and and look at this story that appears in in Acts chapter eleven because it's actually. It's actually a retelling of an event that happens in Acts chapter, in Acts chapter 10. In, that, in, in Acts chapter 10, uh, Peter, who is, is Jewish, he has a, he has a, a, a dream. And in, it, in this dream, he uh, sees, a, he has a vision of a sheep coming down with all of these different animals on on, on the sheep and and, uh, and uh, he hears this this voice from heaven saying Peter get up and 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 kill and eat and he says well you know Lord nothing ever profane has touched my lips and then and then uh, he goes on to uh, he goes on to uh, be visited by these by these men who in, in who invite him to travel to the home of a Roman centurion named Cornelius. And, 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 and it's there in this Gentile's home, in this home of Cornelius, that, the, the, that the, the Holy Spirit falls on these Gentiles and, 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 and Peter witnesses this happening. Sort of like, if you, you can recall back a little bit earlier in the book of Acts at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit falls on the disciples, well, Peter witnesses this and he says, oh my goodness, these Gentiles have received the Holy Spirit just like we did back, back in Pentecost. Well, in our, in, our, in our reading, in our reading this morning from Acts chapter 11, now we find, we, 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 we find Peter in Jerusalem now. And he's and he's with some other he's up with some other religious leaders, and they say to Peter, "Why in the world were you commiserating with the, these uncircumcised Gentiles? Why why were you even in the midst of them? Why were you even talking with them? Why were you even associating with them?" And that's where we find our this 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 reading picking up in Acts. Because now it, Peter is actually giving a response to, to those who are angry with him. Uh, and, and, and he says, well, while I was, while I was in, in, in a, a trance and having a vision, having a dream, he, again, he retells the story of this 
this sheet coming down. And, and on this sheet coming down from heaven, uh, there's this voice saying to Peter, get up and kill and eat. And again, Peter retells the story about how he says, well, Lord, nothing ever uh, unclean or profane has ever touched my lips. And the voice says to him, uh, what, what I have made clean, do not call profane. It said, hey, I guess Peter doesn't get it the first time because several times this, this voice has to run, tell Peter again and again and again. Then finally, the sheep gets wrapped up and taken back up into heaven, and these guys come in and, and say, we want you to come to Cornelius' house, and Peter gets up and goes to Cornelius' house, and again, it's just a retelling of this story that happens. And then Peter at the end says, if if God has given them the gift that leads to repentance and forgiveness, who am I to say that they are not worthy of it? Praise be God, who gives even the Gentiles, Peter says at the end of our story, the gift that leads to repentance. There's so many barriers. When we look at this story, there's so many barriers that are being crossed. There, there are religious barriers. Uh, Peter, a, a, a Jew associating with Cornelius the Centurion, it was a Gentile. Uh, there's um, cultural barriers that are being broken. Uh, there, there are dietary restrictions that are being broken. But I think the biggest restriction that's being broken is that message, that message uh, from God to Peter that says to Peter, you know what, Peter? My grace abounds. My grace is limited. My grace and my love is, is not just for a particular group of people. My, God says to Peter, my grace is for everyone. And in this story, friends, this, there are just so many, there's so many different barriers that are being <clears throat> broken down. As we look at our society today, what barriers do we see that need to be broken down? Maybe there are barriers uh, in, in, in regards to our relationships with with, with, with foreigners or, or people who are immigrants. Maybe the barriers that need to be broken down are the barriers uh, that, uh, keep, that, that divide us or keep us from one another because the other may not look like us or may not dress like us or may maybe not speak like us. Or that maybe the barriers that we have erected or, 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 or barriers of, of, on an educational basis, you know, that, oh, I'm not going to associate with this person because they're not on the same educational level as me. Or maybe as, as social, uh, I'm not going to associate with them because they're not of the same social standing as I am. Or maybe it's, it's, it's a class barrier. I'm not going to associate with this person because they don't have as much money or make as much money as me. There's so many barriers in our society, friends, that we erect. I mean, sometimes in, 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 in the midst of even our, our, our worship, we erect barriers. Oh, I'm not going to sing that song because I don't like it, because it's too slow, or it's too fast, or it's too hard. Or uh, I, 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 I'm not going to, 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 to say those words because they make me feel uncomfortable or they might rub me the wrong way. Just like what Jesus says uh, about love in our text this morning. Barriers. I read a book a few years ago entitled 
if grace is true, if grace is true. And what was interesting in this book that the author says that, or the main theme of his book was that God's grace isn't just for a particular type of individual or a particular group of people. God's grace isn't for a particular religious, cultural, or religious group. No, the author of this book says that God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love is for everyone, for all people, regardless of how much money we make, regardless of which way we look, regardless of what educational background we may have. God's love. God's grace is for all. So again, friends in Christ, what barriers may God be trying to break down in our lives today? Maybe uh, our thoughts about people of other faiths or, or, or our thoughts about people of other political persuasions or, 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 or people who, um, who uh, 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 of, of different genders People of God, we don't have a market on God's grace. Instead, God's grace is free, and God's grace is for all people. All people. And that, my friends, is a word of good news that we can hold on to. That God's grace is for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds. 
intercedes for the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God in your mercy. Inspire us to praise you through the view and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us to urge us towards more deliberate care of the world that you have made. God in your mercy. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God in your mercy. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. God in your mercy. Place holy love at the center of all of our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy. Amen. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all in need. We especially pray for Terry, Grace, Phyllis, Gail, Linda, Frank, Fran, Larry, Don, Ralph, Bob, Heather, Mia, Dolores, Jenny, Joe, Elaine, Nancy, Debbie, Megan, Andrea, and Tom. We pray for the victims of the Buffalo shooting, the, the Boylan family, David Dorsey, Pastor Jim Reed, Megan Baby and family, Diane Carl and family, healing for Margaret and Lori, all who are afflicted with or recovering from COVID-19, people of Ukraine, Russia, and neighboring countries that have been affected by the crisis in Ukraine, those who serve in our armed forces and their families, those affected by violence in their schools, workplaces, or homes. We pray for peace, protection of human lives, and harmony in the world. Those who are lonely and have no one to pray for, God in your mercy. Amen. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children. Kindred of Christ. God in your mercy. Amen. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life in his spirit. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And may we take a few moments to share Christ's peace with one another. Amen.
Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until so my grace. I come to your glorious kingdom and the land of peace. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
that Christ said to you are able, I invite you to please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ may strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I invite the congregation to please remain standing for our benediction, our blessing this morning. Friends in Christ, again, it was a blessing to have you gathered with us this morning. Um, just a really brief announcement, but an important announcement. Many of you know uh, that I believe that I have written, written down. It's da, 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 da. I haven't written down there. M M Memorial Day is May 30th, and we are going to recognize our uh, our service members by mentioning them by name during our prayers of intercession. As many of you know, there's probably yeah, like right, around, right in the middle of the prayers of intercession, there is an opportunity on Memorial Day for names mentioned. And usually we don't have names or no one mentions any names. So if you have a, 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 fre a friend or a family member who has served in the armed forces who is no longer with us, uh, please either email that name to Dina in the office or give the name to me or put the name in our prayer book, this one on the side here. And then we'll make sure on uh, that Sunday, uh, May 29th, during the prayers of intercession, we will recognize those who have served in our armed forces who are either were members of the congregation or were uh, friends or family members. Uh, members in the congregation. And then the second announcement I want to make is for those of you who have, who have to see friends, Sykes is, is, is worshiping with us this morning. I wanted to just make that announcement because she's over here and you may not see her. So I just wanted to let the folks in right here. And then, and then, and then, and this morning, so, so good to see her uh, this morning. So. Uh, friends in Christ, I invite you to uh, receive uh, the blessing of the benediction this afternoon. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 389, Christ is Alive, verses 1, 3, and 5.